Hello, in this video we're going to look at what is called a square root matrix and it's analogous to if we think about numbers. So if we think about the number 36 and then we take the positive square root of it, which is also called the principal root, we get a number 6. And then if we take 6 times itself, we get the original number back, 36. And, and that's what we're trying to do here. We have a matrix A, and then we want to we want to take find it a number or another matrix. I mean, such that when we multiply it by itself, we get the original A back. Okay. So if we let A be an n by n symmetric positive definite matrix, we want to find a matrix at the square root of A or A to the one half such that the product of the square root matrices is equal to the original matrix A, we get it back. But then from this, we can also develop inverse. So we take the inverse of the square root matrix, pre and post multiply A by those matrices, and you get the identity. And so there's this whole relationship between the square root matrix and the original matrix A. So I have a video called the spectral decomposition and it talks about how to decompose a matrix into matrices that that house the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues so if you haven't seen this video I'd recommend going back and watching it so by the spectral decomposition theorem there exists an orthogonal matrix A and a diagonal matrix lambda such that A is P lambda P prime now P is equal to, um, it's an n by n matrix, and these e, EIs are the normalized eigenvectors of A. And lambda is a diagonal matrix that has, you know, that contains the lambda 1 through lambda n, which are the n positive eigenvalues of A. So note, because that they're normalized eigenvectors, P prime P and P P prime is equal to the identity matrix. That's just by definition of what we mean by normalized eigenvalues. So if we let lambda to the one half be the diagonal element, that, or a diagonal matrix with the diagonal elements equal to the square root of the lambda or the eigenvalues. So it's, it's very similar to lambda but we're going to take the square root of each eigenvalue as opposed to just the eigenvalue. Then it can be shown that the lambda to the one half times lambda to the one half is lambda. And this, the, all these are diagonal matrices and you, and you get the lambda matrix back. If we let lambda to the one half inverse, which is just commonly written lambda to the minus one half, be the diagonal elements of the reciprocals of the square root of the eigenvalues, then we can show that, that lambda to uh, minus one half times lambda to the one half is equal to the identity matrix. And, and if we let lambda inverse be the reciprocals, remember this is uh, lambda is a diagonal matrix of the eigenvalues. So if we let lambda inverse be the, a diagonal matrix of the reciprocals of the eigenvalues, then lambda inverse times lambda, you get the identity back. And also the way we defined uh, lambda to the minus one half, you can show that lambda to the minus one half times lambda to the minus one half is lambda inverse. Okay, so this is all background. So the next page is what what we're going to propose as the square root matrix. So here we're going to propose that the square root of A, so A to the one half, is P lambda to the one half P prime. Now this is very close to the spectral decomposition of A. If this were just lambda and not lambda to the one half, this would be A, the spectral decomp of A, but we're, we're changing this diagonal matrix to the square root of it. And we're going to define A to the minus one half as P lambda to the minus one half P prime. 
we're going to show that these matrices satisfy our goals. So if we have a to the one half times a to the one half, and then what we plug in what we're proposing as the, the square root matrices, which is are these, then when we multiply this out, this p prime p is the identity matrix, and that goes away in this matrix product, and we just get this. But lambda to the one half times lambda to the one half we showed was lambda. So we get P lambda P prime. But this is the spectral decomposition of A. So the, the, the product of these square root matrices do, does equal A. So the, this is considered a square root matrix. So now here, if we look at A to the minus one half, A, A to the minus one half, and we plug in our definitions for each of those, and we look at this matrix product, P prime P is the identity matrix. P prime P is the identity matrix. So those go away and we're just left with this. Okay. But uh, lambda can be broken up into, you know, two, the product of two square root matrices, lambda the half, lambda the half. But then lambda the minus one half and lambda the one half, that's the identity matrix. And this is the identity matrix. So we get P, P prime. Because, oh, well, this is the identity matrix and it goes away. But P, P prime, because the normalized eigenvectors, is the identity matrix. So this is the identity matrix. And then we set out to show what we wanted to prove. Yep, well, that's all I have for today. The square root matrix is used so much in. Uh, multivariate statistics, multiple regression, discriminant analysis, cluster analysis, I, uh, principal components, and I'm kind of in the multivariate mode here, so I'm going to refer back to this square root matrix so much. You know, I'm going to say, you know, and I'm going to point back to this video and say, you know, you know, because it's because this matrix is symmetric and positively definite, we can develop a square root matrix for it. And, and that way I don't have to reprove it each time. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.